إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد as our brother Bilal حفظه الله has informed you brothers and sisters we're going to be looking at a topic today which is extremely important um, it's the fitna of Facebook and just some things for each and every single one of us to remember. Um, when we look at a topic like this, the first question is, why are we giving so much time to something like Facebook? Why are we not talking about something of aqidah? Why are we not talking uh, about something else? Undoubtedly, aqidah is the crux of the issue. Aqidah is the crux of the matter. But Islam, Part of our aqidah, it teaches us everything that we need to know in our day-to-day -day lives. Any situation that we may find ourselves in, any particular uh, arena that we, we may be in, our religion, it gives us a manhaj, it gives us a methodology, it gives us uh, a way to address these issues or to approach these issues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have revealed to you this book, which is a clarification of all things. So inside this book, the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we as Muslims, we have the answers to all of our problems, the all, all of our situations that we're going to find ourselves in. It's unrealistic for me to sit up here now and say Facebook is haram, don't use it, because the reality of the situation is, is that 95% of the Muslims today, especially living in the West, even in the Arab countries as well, they are using Facebook. So it's, we're dreaming if we think that we are going to stop the Muslims from using Facebook. It's absolutely impossible. And the reality of the situation is, is that most of the Muslims, they will not read a book of aqidah, they will not read a book of fiqh, they don't, probably won't even read the Qur'an. So they take their religion from YouTube and Facebook. So we need to be realistic in this issue, we need to tackle this issue head on, and we need to understand that Facebook is not going to go away. Facebook, us sitting here today, and if I was to say to you brothers and sisters, here are the trials and temptations of Facebook, get off it. One or two people may leave, but it's not going to uh, change the millions and millions of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are using this. So I think a more effective and efficient way, closer to the haqq bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, is to make you brothers and sisters aware of some of the trials and temptations of Facebook and give some guidelines how to minimize this trial, how to minimize this temptation, how to make the most of Facebook so it's actually good for our deen and our dunya and our akhirah and it doesn't work against us by the permission of Allah. For those brothers who don't use Facebook or for those elders who don't use Facebook, they don't use the internet, guaranteed your children are going to be in this situation. You need to know about this so you can warn them and you can also, uh, you can also uh, supervise what they are doing on Facebook. Ikhwani, the first thing that I want to mention about the trials and the fitan of Facebook is this trial of pictures. Pictures. The first thing within this trial of pictures is our sisters who don't wear hijab, so they don't cover themselves, posing virtually semi-naked and they are posting pictures of themselves up. Posting pictures of themselves up on Facebook and anybody can see this. Anybody can see this. So she wouldn't walk down the street like this. She doesn't have, uh, should we say, uh, 
the ignorance to walk down the street like this but subhanallah she thinks that it's okay for her to post these pictures online where she is posing and she is wearing uh, a full face of makeup and not wearing not much uh, not many clothes ikhwani my dear brothers and sisters in reality this person it's worse for you to be on facebook in this state it's worse for you to be on Facebook in this state because more people are going to see you online, more people are going to see your aura than if you just took a walk to the shops and back in this way. If you took a walk to the shop and back, maybe 10, 15 people would see you. But subhanAllah, the way Facebook works, everybody can see each other's activity. So you upload one picture, somebody views it, the rest of, if that person has a thousand friends and that person comments on your picture, the person's 1,000 friends are going to be able to see your picture. That person's 1,000 friends are going to have access to your aura. Ikhwani, the person who does this, for the person, the man who looks at this, He's going to get the sin, but the woman is also going to carry his sin as well. Because she has put herself up there, she has put herself in this position, there was no need for her to be in this position. And this is not how we as Muslims should be. We should cooperate with one another in goodness and righteousness, but we should not cooperate in sin and transgression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْأُدْوَانِ Cooperate with one another in righteousness and piety, but do not cooperate in sin and transgression. So my dear sister, if you are posting these pictures of yourself, fear Allah. Fear Allah and know that that one picture may be the reason why you enter into the fire of Jahannam. Even after your death, you might die tonight, but your picture is going to remain up. Your picture is going to remain up. And whoever sees it, you are going to carry that sin. Imagine being in your grave and you're being punished in your grave and you don't know why you're being punished. But this is because you left behind this picture. You are in your grave, but your pictures are still online. You are in your grave, but your pictures are still being spread around. And men are still looking at your open display, this tabarruj, which is absolutely forbidden in Islam. The second type of pictures that we get from the sisters is where the sister is wearing a headscarf but she has put, like she spent an hour doing her makeup and she's just put up pictures of her looking as like in her most beautiful state. This is going to tempt the males. This is going to tempt the men. And she will argue and she will say, no, you know, you can lower your gaze, etc. But there's no benefit to these pictures being online. There's no benefit to having these pictures online. It's absolutely forbidden to have this type of thing. And Ikhwani, what we find and the most strange and ajib thing is when we find sisters who are married and they are posting pictures of themselves like this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in an authentic hadith, he said three people, do not ask me about them. A man who leaves the jama'ah and he disobeys his leader and he dies in this state of disobedience. A slave who runs away and then dies. And a woman whose husband is absent. Her husband, it, she's not, he's not on Facebook, he doesn't know how to use his technology. Her husband is absent and has left her with everything that she needs. And after she has made a wanton display of herself, she has openly displayed herself. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not ask me about these people. The other type is we get those sisters who wear niqab and they've got so much eye makeup on, subhanAllah. Again, our sisters need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the point of niqab? Is to cover your beauty. What's the point of niqab? Is to cover your face and not attract this attention to yourself. So you cover your eyes, so you cover your face and then you attract attention to your eyes. This type of woman is a temptress. This type of woman is a devil in disguise. At least the others, they make an open display. This one, she is tempting the brothers and she is the veil uh, in front of her face. She is making a mockery of the niqab. We need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Another one of these fitan which you might find is people uploading pictures of themselves and then other Muslims are commenting and rating these pictures. So you will have pictures of sisters and then brothers are then rating or commenting and saying this one is like this, this one is like this. So they are actually rating this, uh, these pictures and these are our Muslim brothers and our Muslim sisters. Ikhwani, there is actually a very big uh, epidemic going around now on Facebook where the sisters who are uploading their pictures, people are taking their pictures and photoshopping their heads onto the, onto the bodies of naked women. So now you may see, like you might have your picture and subhanallah, people are taking this and photoshopping it onto the bodies of lewdly dressed women, or, or naked women. Ikhwani, why upload it in the first place? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have the brothers now. This fitna of the brothers now. The brothers posing like women, taking pictures of themselves, cheesy smiles, cheesy grins, you know, puts his best mosque hat on, puts his best cardigan on, and he's there and he's flexing himself. Subhanallah. Is this manly, ya ikhwan? Is this what a man does? This is imitation of women and this is making a joke. And the brothers with beards may sit there and think, no, no, wallahi, the brothers with beards do it more than the other brothers. They will take close-ups of their beards, etc. It's an absolute joke, ya ikhwan. And anyone who has a Facebook account will see this and it's not difficult to see. But perhaps the worst thing, perhaps the worst thing is those brothers who post pictures of their wives. Those brothers who post pictures of their wives, and everybody on this person's Facebook profile has the ability to see this man's wife. Ikhwani, where has our protective jealousy gone? This man is a donkey. This man is a day youth. This man who has no, uh, no ghira, no protective jealousy for his woman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, three people will not enter into paradise and Allah won't even look at them on yawm al-qiyamah. The one who is disobedient to his parents, the woman who imitates men and a day youth. That man who has no protective jealousy. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that the youth, this man who has no protective jealousy over his women folk, is the most vile of Allah's creation. And Jannah is forbidden for him. A man should be jealous with regards to his wife's honor and standing. He should defend her whenever she is slandered or spoken ill of behind her back. Actually, this is the right of every single Muslim in general, but a right of the spouse specifically. He should also be jealous in not allowing other men to look at his wife or speak with her in a manner which is not appropriate. Ikhwani, as men today, we have lost this ghira for our women folk. So we protect our credit card details and we keep them safe. But subhanallah, our wives, we allow everybody to see that. We allow everybody to see our wives, but our bank details, we protect them and we keep them safe. Is your wife not more valuable than your bank details? Is your wife not more valuable than your bank card? Ikhwani, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the characteristics of the Salaf al-Salih, those righteous predecessors. They had ghira, they had protective jealousy over their women. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw in Jannah, he saw a palace and there was a woman in the grounds of that palace and he wanted to enter but then he was told it was the house or the palace of Umar radiallahu an. when he heard this he said oh Umar I remembered your ghira so I didn't enter I remembered your protective jealousy over your women folk so I never entered into that palace so the Umar radiallahu an, he began crying and he said would I be would, 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 would you be jealous of me or would I have something to hide from you O messenger of Allah but the point here is, Ikhwani, ghira, this protective jealousy, is a good quality. Forget all of this. What about the ruling on pictures? What about the ruling on pictures? Okay, we might cite there's a difference of opinion. But is it really worth it? Is it worth putting your picture online and potentially falling into this punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, Allah has cursed the makers of the images. And he has said every maker of images will be in the fire. He came home one day and he saw a cushion that his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha had brought home. There was a face on it. He became angry. He never entered into his home. Aisha radiallahu anha, in seeing his anger, she said, I seek forgiveness of Allah and his messenger. So then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained to her, the makers of these images will be punished on the day of resurrection and it will be said to them, bring to life that which you have created. Give life to that which you have created. And in another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the angels do not enter in a home where there are images or dogs. So Ikhwani, look at this. This is a stern warning against images. A stern warning against pictures. So if you take or if you think that the other opinion, and I don't personally think based on the evidence is that the other opinion is stronger. I think this opinion of not taking pictures unless there is a dire necessity is stronger. But why do we have then the pictures up? Why do we take these pictures? Why do we put them up? So we need to fear Allah with regards to this. And we need to know that the image makers have been promised a very severe punishment. And you gain nothing from having your pictures up. So don't potentially fall into the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first fitna, the fitna of pictures. The second fitna which I want to mention is the fitna of debating. Everybody on Facebook just wants to debate. We have the Brailvis, we have the Diobandis, we have the Takfiris, we have the Modernists, we have Hizbut Tahrir. We have everybody on Facebook and all of them want to just debate, debate, debate the night away. Sometimes you may think, do you people even pray your salah? Because all you are ever doing is debating. So on the one hand, we have the Brailvis spreading their anti-Najdi rubbish. Okay, spreading this stuff, which, for example, pictures, oh, Allah, it says Allah in the clouds, it says Allah in the fruit, it says Allah on the side of this cow. Allah must'an. And they, this is their religion. This is what they spread on Facebook. Then we have the Diobundis, and they are spreading their falsehood through channels like Hanafi Fiqh channel and this type of thing, and they are spreading their falsehood like this. And they are pretending that their allegiances to the Qur'an and the Sunnah is greater than their allegiances to their forefathers. And we've already mentioned this falsehood. Then we have the keyboard mujahideen. These takfiris who they are all they are talking about establish khilafah. Typing away establishing khilafah on their keyboard and they are not doing anything to establish khilafah in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you disagree with them, then you are a hypocrite. You are munafiq. And they will even call you a kafir to your face. They will make takfir of you to your face. Ikhwani, they are the keyboard mujahideen. They're not doing anything to help our brothers and sisters, only causing more problems. Then we have the modernists like the Quilliam Foundation, as Asghar Bukhari and his like uh, impact for UK and these other uh, uh, you know hypocrite organizations and these are the people who deny hadith so they deny the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ikhwani you see facebook is just like a melting pot of people who have got nothing better to do with their time they have nothing better to do with their time. And if you're not well founded and well grounded in the usul and the foundations of your religion, it's very easy to be led astray. Because people will come at you with, you know, with, uh, with very complex arguments, very beautiful arguments, and they may mislead you from the path of the Salaf al-Salih. Then we have people commenting and debating on issues which they are not qualified to speak about. Something which should be reverted or referred back to the scholars and now we have this person doesn't even know how to do wudu properly can't even recite surat al-fatiha with proper tajweed and now he's talking about fiqhi issues which should be reverted or sent back to the ulama ikhwani another thing another fitna that we have is this whole fitna of copy and paste if someone's on facebook then it's like you know he copies a thousand words and then you copy two thousand words and it turns into a big copy and paste uh, you know, a copy and paste competition. Neither of you has read what you're talking about. Neither of you knows what you're copying and pasting. But subhanAllah to get your point across. And this is not sincere. 
The whole point of you know speaking and debating with your brother is to reach the truth, to reach the the, the haq based upon truths, uh, proofs, and evidences. And very rarely have I ever come across anybody on Facebook who is sincere in this way. They just want to put their point across. We also have the fitna of free mixing. Men and women just speaking together as if they're on, on the same post, messaging one another as if they're friends. And they are, you know, he's not her mahram, she's not his sister or his mother or his auntie, his wife, etc. And they are speaking in this way and we have open flirting sometimes. Open flirting between people who are supposed to be practicing. Open flirting between people who have beards, women who are covered up. Another fitna, ikhwani, which is linked to this, is this fitna of time. Time. We waste so much time on Facebook, brothers and sisters, waste so much time on Facebook. We delay our prayers. We don't read Quran. This time, which we spend on Facebook, either on our phones or on our PCs, whatever it might be, if we just dedicated this time to reading a book, to reading the Quran. We as Muslims, we understand in this dunya, we have a limited amount of time in this dunya. So we try and maximize our reward for the minimum, in the minimum amount of time that we have available. Read Quran, read the books of Aqidah, read the books of Fiqh. You don't need to try and debate with somebody. Because if that person truly wanted to debate, then subhanallah, they would go and they would read up on this and they would see that subhanallah, the haqq is with those who follow the salaf al-salih. A man came to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, and he said, oh Imam, debate with me, debate with me. And the Imam said, look, I'm not going to accept anything from you. Not even a single ayah. I'm not going to debate with you. And the man said, oh Imam, debate with me. If you are right, then I will follow you. And if I am right, then you will follow me. Imam Malik, he said, okay, what if a third person comes and he beats us both? The man said, we will follow him. Imam Malik said, what type of religion is this that we follow the one who is better at debating and we leave what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with and we just follow the one who debates. The one who is good at debating, we just follow him. So our religion is not debating ikhwani. Our religion is based on proofs and evidences and we don't need to debate with Ahlul Bid'ah. We don't need to sit with them. We don't need to give them our time. Another thing is that you will find brothers and sisters, this online personality, their online persona takes over their life. This online reputation takes over their life. So they dedicate their lives to this Facebook online relation, uh, this online uh, personality. Their marriage suffers, they're no longer spending time with the family, no longer seeking knowledge, no longer giving da'wah, and it's just all about Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Okay, Ikhwani, I've mentioned just in the short space of time that we have, just mentioned some problems or some trials or some fitan associated with Facebook. How should we use Facebook? How can I advise you brothers and sisters to use Facebook? Like I mentioned, it's not realistic for anybody to come now and just say, stop using Facebook. Because the reality is, Ikhwani, the vast majority of our brothers and sisters, this is the only type of Islamic knowledge that they ever come across is either via Facebook or via YouTube. And they're not going to leave this. So we need to embrace it and try and call those people to the Qur'an and Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. Facebook can be a good medium as long as you use it within strict, strict guidelines and you use it with the intention of spreading the Qur'an and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. Like I mentioned, if somebody posts up a picture, that picture, a thousand people can see it. So if you post up a hadith, if you post up some sayings of the scholars, then thousands of people will, will see that in a short space of time. So there are advantages to get this type of da'wah, but we need to be realistic. Ask yourself, why am I using Facebook? Am I using Facebook to find myself a wife? Am I using Facebook to increase my popularity? Am I using Facebook to spread the Quran? <laughs> Am I using Facebook to spread the Qur'an and Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih? Ikhwani, this is everything that we need to ask ourselves. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever, whoever lies against me intentionally, then let him take his seat in the fire. Ikhwani, this is a warning now. Before you post anything on Facebook, before you post anything on Facebook, ask yourself, is this authentic? Is this authentic? Am I spreading something which is an authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Am I spreading something which is fabricated? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever lies against me intentionally, let him take his seat in the fire. Whoever lies against the messenger alayhi salam, he's going to take his seat in the fire. How do we lie on the Prophet alayhi salatu salam? We lie on the messenger of Allah by spreading false ahadith. We lie on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by saying he said this. The one who makes 10 people aware of the month of Rajab, the, fa the halfa is not going to touch him. This type of thing is very common. We spread it, text messages, WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages, emails, and we spread it far and wide. But we are actually lying on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Avoid engaging in these debates. If you post up a hadith or a, an ayah of Quran or some understanding of the Salaf, you're going to have Ahlul Bid'ah calling you a Wahhabi. You're going to have them calling you a Najdi, this, that. Just delete it. Delete their comments. Don't even engage in this debate. Because Ikhwani, like I said, most of the time they are not sincere. Most of the time they just want to put their own opinion across. It's your Facebook. You don't need to turn it into a public forum. If you post something good and beneficial, an ayah of Quran, uh, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a point of benefit, inshallah you will get the reward. But if somebody is misguided because you allowed somebody to say milad is permissible and he brings so many so-called proofs and evidences, somebody reads that and begins to become misguided, maybe you will share in that because you allowed it on your wall. Okay, so don't, don't even entertain Ahlul Bidah. Don't en even entertain their shirk. Don't enter entertain their innovation. Avoid putting pictures of yourself on display, especially for the sisters. Doesn't matter how beautiful you think you look, brothers, don't matter how muscly you think you look, how lovely you think your beard is, don't post pictures of yourself on Facebook. Okay? Because this is part of this insincerity. If you're truly there to give da'wah to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, you can do that without posting pictures of yourself. If you're truly there to give da'wah to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you don't need to cake yourself in makeup and look beautiful and have a pout. You don't need to do this. Okay? The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is enough. And finally, Ikhwani, use... Uh, Facebook to call people to the book of Allah, call them to Tawheed, warn against Ahlul Bid'ah, warn against them. So you can say, look, there is this channel, uh, for example, uh, the Brailvi channel, and this is what they're posting. This is a falsehood of what they are saying. This is what the scholars have said about posting or calling upon others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring your proofs and evidences. And then if uh, Ahlul Bid'ah decide to comment, then just delete their comments. Like I said, time management is very important. We use our time wisely. Don't learn your religion off Facebook. Do not learn your religion off Facebook, you yourself. But in reality, give da'wah to the Qur'an, to the Sunnah. But learn your religion from the scholars. Learn your religion from the books. Post uh, ayat, a hadith. Stay away from these Facebook jihadis. Because subhanAllah, there have been cases where People have been entrapped by the government, just like we have people who have been entrapped by undercover agents posing as Muslims and they talk to you, they try and get your views, your opinions, and then once they get you into a corner, you are arrested. So be very careful who your friends are on Facebook, just like who they are in reality. And finally, uh, like I mentioned, please don't look for a spouse on Facebook, stick to the traditional methods, go through your friends, your family, go through the masajid, etc., you don't want a sister who 50,000 men have seen her posing and you don't want a sister who 50,000 men have seen her in her most beautiful state. You don't want a woman like this. You want a woman who guards her chastity and her modesty. And for those brothers and sisters who have children and they are using Facebook, monitor what your children are doing on the internet. Monitor what they are looking at 
on the internet because if you don't teach them their religion somebody else is going to teach them their religion if you don't monitor what they see they are going to see those things which you don't want them looking at so be very very careful ikhwani because facebook is a big fitna and it's definitely fitna book uh, but subhanallah if you use it correctly then it may there may be some benefit but if you can i advise you brothers and sisters to avoid it altogether ultimately allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik